Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, today we are happy to come together to discuss about uh, the antenna technologies for the mobile phone uh, devices, and especially a uh, particular case of iPhone and iPad and the antenna issues. So uh, this is my presentation is last announced in China, and also we have a lot of people talking about these key issues because uh, you probably know the the couple of antenna problems with the iPhone 4 and also the, for the other vendors we also have the same issues uh, with the smartphone antenna so today we have uh, we have a lot of experts come together to address these emerging issues so my, my talk topic is on the antenna technology for mobile phone devices so let's uh, talk about the challenge in mobile phone antennas uh, if you look at it, the mobile phone antennas uh, is, is, is totally different from the uh, other systems like uh, base station or uh, other systems because the mobile phone the size is very limited. So the first challenge is, is, it, is we have to uh, take care of, of the trade-off between size and the performance. So that's the issue because the size is very small. We, we don't have enough uh, space to put uh, multiple antennas in the handphone. So the size is the issue and also uh, of course we need the performance so there's always a trade-off. The second issue is handhold interface and analytical modeling. So when you hold the handphone, it does uh, generate a lot of interference with the systems, with IF, with the antenna there. So the handhold interference analytical modeling uh, is a very important topic. Uh, a lot of people uh, uh, forget this issue, but that's very, very important. The third issue is the human body radio, radio uh, uh, absorbing modeling. So when you, close to, when you hold the antenna close to the body, uh, some energies comes to the body because uh, it's too close. When you hold it, it uh, depends on how much how, uh, tired you hold it. So the absorbing models uh, is, is different. So that's also very important. And also we have an uh, interband frequency interference model. So because uh, right now uh, uh, iPhone, iPhone 4 or whatever, I, uh, uh, we have to support multiple frequency. So it's multiple frequency in the same devices and uh, there's a, a, a in frequency interference between the interband. And also with the intraband channel uh, interference modeling, if you're using the same frequency, same wireless standards, uh, but using different channels there, so there are multiple channel interference. And also we have a multi-band antenna optimization technology, because you, if you're using multi-antennas, multi-band antennas in one devices, and uh, the optimization is very important. It's, it's not just like how much, uh, how you design the, the, the antenna, it's very important is optimized, optimized the performance. And then we have a multi-band antenna calibration technologies. We need the calibration to, 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 to compensate, uh, to reduce uh, uh, some interference or, or, or some other issues, technical issues. And generally, we need a radio transmission optimization and link budget. Uh, generally, users care about what users care about the, to, the general performance between the device to a base station. And the user care about uh, is it connected or is it not connected. They don't care about how the antenna works, so that's the most important. So eventually we need the overall performance, the overall optimization between the device to the base station, we call radio transmission optimization and link budget. So link budget is across all the, uh, the mobile device on our station. And the last one, we need a multi-dimensional hangover calibration, especially for the multi-band in the future, the open wireless architecture. We need a, a multiple hangover. We, we, we need a, a horizontal hangover, we also need a vertical hangover. So, a hangover between uh, the same wireless standards, a different uh, uh, base station, also hangover across a different air interface or different radio transmission technologies. So, as a conclusion, uh, basically, uh, 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 as I always say, antenna performance is much more important than antenna design. It's not just a design issue, it's a performance issue. So, antenna performance is much more, much more important uh, than the design. And that, uh, let's take example of the iPhone, iPad. Uh, uh, why they have problems here and uh, how does our problem actually it's not just the iPhone it's for for the other phones they also have same problem but uh, just uh, we take this case examples okay so if you look at an iPhone antenna design basically if you look at it uh, 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 I summarize all the uh, most of the iPhone iPad antenna technology are included here it's a 17 uh, patterns by uh, 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 Dr. Robert uh, Schlapp from, uh, from Apple so if you look at it uh, I spent almost like two months uh, to read each pages analysis, each patterns they file with the with iPhone and I, uh, especially iPhone 4. 
and then if uh, and also generated almost like 500 pages evaluation and uh, and uh, review reports. Uh, if anybody interested, let me know, and uh, we can share. Uh, I look at each patterns. What's their merits? What's their problems? How different they are distinguished with the previous arts uh, by other vendors, and uh, what's the merit there? Uh, uh, why we have to improve it? Um, actually, basically, it's, it's very good. These are all very good inventions, I think. But uh, for 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 my personal understanding, they focus all on the design issue, not on the performance issue. That's the problem from uh, from, from my point of view, because design in such a tiny space, in such a tiny space, tiny size inside of handphone, design a new antenna is not a cost-effective way because the size is too tiny. And uh, uh, almost like 80% of the other phone vendors, they have a similar, a same antenna design inside of this small, small very small uh, handphone. So if you want to have a, a new brick slew out of outside of uh, 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 this 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 small size and ten uh, uh, devices there, it takes a long long time. So design, I should not say is to the end, but I should say is very much to 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 very limited. Have a new breakthrough technologies, new revolutionary approach. So mostly just uh, uh, improve a little bit there. Uh, 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 but uh, as I say, design in such a tiny size space inside a handphone is very difficult. It takes a long, long time. So that's why I always suggest the performance. But I look at this 17 uh, patterns there. They all on the design issue, not a performance issue. And uh, 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 that's, that's we have to uh, continue to, to improve the system. So that's uh, my, my summarize of this one. If everybody interested, we can share uh, the report together. So they are already mentioned, but they are only limited to design, not to performance. So that's it. And then, and then let's, do, uh, let's look at the challenge of traditional antenna testing. Okay, if you look at the challenge to traditional antenna S testing, uh, uh, if you look at the embedded antenna testing, much different than the traditional testing. So because it's embedded inside the handphone without the antenna st stand out, so the testing uh, tools is totally different. So that's the issue. Okay, uh, I don't want to spend too much time because the time limited, but I just mentioned uh, this issue. And how to combat interference in mobile phone? Also, we have a lot of issues. We have to come back to the distortion. distortion. We have to come back to the loss in the SNR and the cut-off issue there. So how, uh, what's the solution? Normally, we, we're using the receiver diversity, but the handphone is too small. So diversity is very limited. We need to, come, we need to, we need to adjust the, the trans, transmit the power, especially when you're close to the uh, base station or far to the base station. And also, we need the antenna calibration. And the calibration is very important. And also, we need the tra transmission optimization and the radio repeater installation. Sometimes, sometimes the signal is too weak. It's not related to your handphone design. It depends on the, it related to the, to the service operator. The operator signal, and if, for example, the ATM signal is weaker than the uh, uh, Verizon. So, if whatever you technology you use for the handset, handset, the signal is still weak. So, and then you have to use some repeaters, which is cheaper, which is easier to install. Okay. And then human body uh, radio absorption models. Uh, this is also very important. There it depends on how how you hold the antenna, and uh, and it's close to the uh, 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 to the head, to the head brain or to the whatever body. So it's so, uh, different. So radiation increasing unlinearly when you're closing the body, and the interference also increasing unlinearly uh, uh, as well. And radio transmission performance degrading, degrading, and very faster when you close too much to the, to the body. To the end. And a reconfigurable mount antenna is always a. Uh, uh, the future and also uh, uh, is an issue. So a lot of issues there. We have to support multiple bands. We have to support 3G. We have to support Wi-Fi. We have to support Bluetooth, a GPS, and a WiMAX there. So the reconfigurable multiple and uh, multi-band antenna is also uh, a big issue. And then if you look at the wireless device, uh, we're normally using wireless cup of this cup of solution there. So that's the issue. And then we have uh, if you're using the uh, FIPA, which is made normal in the handphone design. A couple of issues there. So we have switch feet and switch the ground. And there are a couple of issues there. So uh, anyone interested here, you can uh, talk to me and email the slides. So this basically uh, what I'm talking about today. Uh, the conclusion is very simple. Uh, antenna performance is much more important than antenna design. So I actually, I, actually, I, I suggest the Apple to consider about the performance issue uh, rather than just uh, 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 do everything about the design issue. Okay, okay that's all my talk there. And uh, thank you very much.